Stability AI released Stable Diffusion XL. It's a generative AI model that can generate stunning images of just about anything. Today I'm going to show you how to train a LoRa or low rank adaptation. It's a small file that can be trained to instruct Stable Diffusion on how an object, person, or really anything should look. You can find hundreds of pre-trained LoRa's on Civit AI for everything from animals, people, and even not safe for work content. But what if you want to train your own LoRa to create images of yourself or really anyone else for that matter? If you have a gaming PC, you can probably train your own model to produce high quality, stunning images just like these. To get started, we're going to install a piece of software called Koya SS. Let's get into it. Koya SS provides a user interface for you to train and set up the parameters for your own models. To get started, if you have a Windows machine, you're gonna need Python installed, Git, and Visual Studio. Now, if you're already running Stable Diffusion or any other generative AI tools on your system, you probably have these installed already. If not, check out one of my other tutorial videos that step you through the process. The first step is going to your command prompt, typing CMD will fire that off, and then go to the directory where you wanna install Koya. Make sure you've got plenty of drive space here. It is going to be pretty intensive. From there, we're just going to copy the get clone command from the Koya install directions. That's going to clone the repo to a directory called Koya underscore SS. Once that's done, change to the Koya SS directory and run the setup.bat file. Since we're performing a new installation, we're going to select option one. This part's going to take just a few minutes. It's installing a whole bunch of files and dependencies. So just sit back and relax. Once that's done, it's gonna ask you which compute environment you're running, this machine or Amazon AWS. Select this machine. If you have a multi-CPU or a multi-GPU system, you can select one of those options. Otherwise, no distributed training. Do you wanna run your training on CPU only? Absolutely not. It'd be terribly slow, especially if you have a good GPU. You wish to optimize your script with Torch Dynamo? No. Do you want to use Deep Speed? What GPUs by ID should be used for training this machine? Select all, which is the default. Now it's going to ask you if you want to run FP16 or BF16, and this is going to depend on your GPU. If you have an RTX 30 or 40 series GPU, you're going to select BF16. If you have an older GPU in your system, you're going to select FP16. Now at this point, the installation is done, so you can either go to your Koya SS directory and double click on the GUI.bat file, or select option five if you still have your command prompt open. As you can see, that's gonna start an entirely new command prompt. It's gonna load everything you need in order to start the GUI, as you can see here on the right-hand side of the screen. Go ahead and close that old command prompt at this time. We're done with that. At this point, it's time to source some images to train your model with. And the important thing here is you want a lot of different variations of lighting, facial expression, and backgrounds. This is gonna make the model more flexible in the end. For example, if you wanted to train a model for Margot Robbie, you might go to Google Images and perform a Google image search. It's important to get really high resolution images, so I tend to go to Tools and then filter by size for large. You also don't want images that have multiple people in it. Just something else to keep in mind. In my case, I just broke out my phone and took a whole bunch of selfies of myself around the house and outside with a bunch of different facial expressions and lighting environments to get a good mix of pictures. And as far as the number of images is concerned, you can really train a decent model with as few as 10 images. I tend to get anywhere from 10 to 20 for my typical training. Now, normally at this point, if you've trained a stable diffusion checkpoint model before, you know that you'd normally do image cropping, which sets all the images to a fixed size. With Stable Diffusion XL training, that's actually unnecessary. And in fact, you're going to get better results if you don't do that. Now we'll go back to the UI for Koya. We're going to open the LoRa tab. And if you happen to be one of my Patreon subscribers, I've got this JSON file that has all the configurations that you need in order to start training your model. It's called SDXL Koya SS LoRa Config, and it's set up for an RTX 3090. That's the GPU I've got running in this machine. Now at this point, you could just get going. You wouldn't have any additional configuration to do, but of course I'm gonna step you through everything. So even if you aren't one of my Patreon subscribers, you can still do this start to finish. Now under LoRa, you're gonna see this tools section. Click on that and then click on Dream Booth LoRa folder preparation. This used to be under a tab called deprecated, but newer versions have properly moved this under the tools section. The first thing we're gonna fill out here is the instance prompt. This is super important and most people get this wrong. Most tutorials out there are gonna tell you to use a random string of characters or something super unique 
in order to train your model. But what this really does is give you less flexibility and worse results. In fact, even if you're training a model of yourself, you wanna use another celebrity or someone else, some other object that has a lot of images already in Stable Diffusion XL so that it knows what to create. It has sort of guidance parameters, if you will. So what I like to do is go to a celebrity lookalike site, just drag and drop one of your images there. This is gonna tell you which celebrity you somewhat resemble or that your character somewhat resembles. And it's a really good starting place to train your model. In my case, I'm actually gonna to type Tom Cruise. For the class prompt, I'm gonna type man because that's what I'm training. If you were training a cat or a dog or a woman, you'd set that as a class prompt. For training images, this is where you're gonna set the directory that you saved all of your images that you collected for your character earlier. Now onto regularization images. This helps prevent model overfitting and you're gonna want hundreds of images here that represent the class of images that you're trying to train, in our case, men. These need to be varied and they need to be very high resolution. In fact, I've already got these uploaded to my Patreon for both men and women. If you're not one of my Patreon subscribers, that's okay. You can find these databases online or you could even create one yourself. For repeats, I always go with 20. This is the number of times that each image is gonna be trained in the model. The final thing you wanna do is set the final destination training directory. This is where all of your output data, including the LoRa files created by the training, are gonna end up. Now we just click the button to copy info to folders tab. Now when you go back to training and folders, everything's already pre-filled. The only thing you wanna make sure that you update is the model output name. So in my case, I'm gonna use my name, which is Brian underscore love it. And I'm gonna do a hyphen Tom underscore cruise. This is so for this Laura, every single one of the files is gonna have my name. So I know what the subject was that I was training. And then it's gonna have Tom Cruise, which is what I know I need to use for my prompts. Now we need to head over to the utilities tab. We're gonna to have to do some captioning. Specifically, we're gonna click on blip captioning. Blip captioning just uses artificial intelligence to scan the images, look them over, and then create a text file that has all the keywords that are associated with how the images look. It's how you get Stable Diffusion to understand the context and the words and keywords that are associated with each of the images that you're using as your training data. Go ahead and select your source images directory. Make sure the file extension is .txt. And for the prefix to add to the blip caption, we're gonna go ahead and use the celebrity name that we had earlier. So in this case, Tom underscore Cruz. Go ahead and click on caption images. And then if you load up that command prompt, you're gonna see that it's going through and it's starting to caption each individual image. Once it's done, go ahead and go back to your training image directory and you're gonna see that you're gonna have the image and then this text caption file next to it. When you load that, you're gonna see that it's gonna have Tom underscore Cruz or whatever celebrity name you chose to use. And it says a bald man sitting in a room with a lamp above him. And that's not bad, but you could add some additional context here that's just gonna help with the training. So you could say wearing a gray polo shirt with two buttons. Load up another one here and it says, Tom Cruise, a man in a blue shirt is taking a selfie. Not bad, but just take a few minutes and go through here and add any additional little contextual elements that you wanna to add to each of these images just to give it a little more detail about what's going on. Once you're done renaming all the text files, make sure that you select them all, copy, and then paste them into your source image directory so that they're there with your initial training images that you're gonna use for this. Now we're gonna jump into the meaty part. We're gonna to go to Laura training parameters. If you're using my config file, everything's already set up for you. Otherwise, let's go through each of these. Train batch size, I usually leave this at one. This is the number of images that it's gonna train at one given time. It's gonna use more VRAM, but it will speed up to the training if you do have this at a higher number. I just happen to leave it at one. For Epoch, this is basically a way to split up the training. Remember how we set 20 repeats earlier for each image. If we leave Epoch set to one, it means we're gonna train 20 steps for each source image and be done. If we have 10 source images, we're gonna train 200 steps. Now, if we set this to 10 epics, we'll train 2000 steps and so on. I typically just set this to 10. And the other thing I do is save every N epochs. I set this to one. This means we're gonna end up with 10 LoRa files at the end of this, we're gonna be able to go through and kind of pick which one looks the best. And there's a trade-off that I'll talk about a little bit later between flexibility and precision. And I'll show you how to find the best model that you get. For caption extension, make sure that's set to .txt. That's the same thing we used when we did the blip captioning earlier. For mixed precision and save precision, 
If you're running an RTX 3090 like I am or a 40 series GPU, you're gonna set that to BF16 for both, otherwise FP16. I don't touch the number of CPU threads per core. And then I do make sure that I check both cache latency and cache latency to disk. This is just gonna speed things up a little bit more. For the learning rate scheduler, we're gonna select constant. And then optimizer is Ada factor. Now, it's really important that if you select Ada factor, you've got a copy from the description in the video, these extra optimized parameters. You need scale parameter false, relative step false, and warm up initialization false. Learning rate. Man, there's a lot of information about this online, and I trained probably 30 different LoRa files just trying different settings, and I found that it really doesn't make that big a difference. By having a slightly higher learning rate, it just means there's going to be a little bit more difference between the different epochs or the LoRa files that are generated, and you might find that you have a higher quality, more trained model at a lower epoch. In my case, I typically go with 0 0.0003, and I suggest you do the same. For learning rate warm-up, we leave that at zero. Max resolution should be 1024 by 1024. This is the default resolution for Stable Diffusion XL. Now you can save a little bit of VRAM here if you don't have an RTX 3090 or a 4090 that has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you could set something like 768 by 768. It's gonna save on VRAM and let you train a little bit more efficiently. But the trade-off is the images that are generated are gonna be a little bit lower quality. Enable buckets, make sure this is selected. This is very important. This ensures that you don't have to crop your images. It doesn't matter what resolution, vertical and horizontal they are, it's gonna take those in and use them just fine. For both text encoder learning rate and UNet learning rate, you're gonna set both of those to 0 0.0003, just like we set the learning rate to earlier. Check the box for no half VAE, and then network rank. This one's a little bit more interesting. Network rank increases the detail retained in the model, but it also increases the size of the LoRa file that's generated. Higher numbers here are gonna have more detail, better color, better lighting, so I usually go with 256 for the network rank and one for the network alpha. But just be aware that every one of your LoRa files that's generated by this, and there's gonna be 10 for this particular run, are gonna be about 1.7 gigabytes in size. Now, if you don't have much VRAM or you want smaller files, you could train at something like 32 for network rank and 16 for network alpha. It's gonna be a little bit lower quality model, but that might be okay depending on what you're training and what you're getting after. And we're gonna scroll back up to the top and click on advanced. Scroll down and make sure that you check gradient checkpointing. Cross attention should be set to X formers and then don't upscale bucket resolution, just leave it how it is. And once you click on start training, you can go ahead and pull back open that command prompt window. It's gonna show you the progress. In my case, since I'm doing a video right now, I can't run this at the same time because it'll use too much memory but it uses about 20 gigabytes of VRAM and it's gonna take about 10 hours because I have 40 files. If you have 10 images that you're training on, it should take about a third of that time. And keep in mind too, if you tune down the resolution or you change some of those other settings that I mentioned earlier, you can get this to run on about 12 gigabytes of VRAM, although 16 is probably preferable. Once all of that's done, it's time to load this up in Automatic 11.11 or whatever other Stable Diffusion image generator software you use. First thing we want to do is make sure we select Stable Diffusion XL Base 1.0, and then we're going to figure out a prompt that we're going to insert. I like to go over to Civit AI, just find a random image that I think looks cool, and use that as sort of a baseline. So we'll go ahead and select the prompt here. We'll paste it into the prompt, and then at the very end, we're going to go down to this LoRa section, we're gonna find Brian Lovett, Tom Cruise. We're gonna find the first one and we're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's right, we're gonna select all 10 LoRa files and I'll show you why. You can see that that adds each of the LoRa files up here to the prompt. We're gonna go ahead and right click those and click on copy. And then we're gonna delete all but the first one. Now the really important thing is we need our keyword trigger here for our LoRa. So, where it says close portrait of a man, I'm gonna delete A and I'm gonna say close portrait of Tom Cruise man, since that's our prompt trigger that we set when we trained this model. I'm gonna crank up the sampling steps to about 30, and then we're just gonna generate an image. That's not too bad for a first attempt, but I'd really like something that's facing forward a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate another one. 
Also be sure to set your resolution to 1024 by 1024. And this is a pretty good result, nice looking image. This is with the first LoRa that we trained. Now I'm gonna show you how you can see the comparison side by side of all 10 of your LoRa files. So down here, we're gonna select this sort of recycle symbol. That's gonna set the seed to this image seed so that every single one of the images we generate here in a minute is gonna use the same seed. For script in the dropdown, we're gonna select XYZ plot. And for the X type, we're gonna select prompt SR. Now remember when I have you copy all those LoRa files that we had up in the prompt earlier, now you're gonna paste those into the X values over here. And in between each one, you're gonna put a comma until all of them have a comma except for the very last LoRa file. What's gonna do is it's gonna look for this very first LoRa image, and then it's gonna replace that in the prompt with the different LoRa files for every single image generation. So when we click on generate, it's gonna actually generate 10 images horizontally along the X axis, and each one's gonna use a different LoRa file. You'll see here in a minute. All right, that takes just a few minutes, but as you can see, it produces all the images side by side. It's a really cool way to just kind of take a look at all the different LoRa files and the images that they generate. The other cool thing here is you can sort of think about this as a continuum from the left to the right. The LoRa files on the right hand side of this are going to produce really high quality, kind of really close to the original image. You can even see that elements of the shirt sort of change. It looks more like my gray polo that I was wearing as it gets more to the right. On the opposite end of the spectrum on the left here, you're going to get LoRa files that are really flexible. So you might be able to get more artistic freedom if you wanted to create an anime version of the person or some sort of crazy hair or something else that didn't really exist in the training data. You might have better luck using one of the LoRa files from farther to the left than those farther to the right. For me, I typically find a good mixture balance of flexibility and precision is somewhere around LoRa 3 or 4 for my own personal uses. Let me know what you find when you train your own models. Also, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or anything else I can help out with. Otherwise, I'm Brian Lovett. This is All Your Tech AI. We'll check you next time. Thank you so much.